there are certain things you take with you by commuting because you have to and then there are things that you take because you want to you could argue that this is you will ever truly need for bike commuting it's a box standard hybrid bike with nothing added to it in fact some would argue that this is more than you need for bike commuting because it has gears there are two extremes there are the purists who say anything else than a fixie is more than you ever need and then there are those like me who want to try every single gadget on the bicycle but who is right and what do you actually need for bike commuting and what are the things that you might want to add of course a bike in good working order is necessary and that's not up for discussion but what about gears do you need any and if so how many obviously i can't answer that question for you I imagine that most people need at least some gears on the bike. If your commute is mostly flat, you might get away with three gears. But if you have some climbs on your commute, then you might want to get seven gears or more. Once you've got your means of transportation, everything else seems to be optional. Though this bike is in good working order and technically speaking, you can jump on it and ride it as far as you want to. It would be wrong to assume that this is the ideal commuter as it is set up. What if it gets dark, for example, or what if it starts raining, or what if you want to lock up your bike somewhere when you get to your destination? As a bike commuter, you cannot ignore these questions. And I think we can agree that the hallmark of a good commuter is that it's practical, it's safe, and it's reliable. And everything that enhances these without adding too much complexity are necessary. For example, add fenders to protect your frame and your clothes from rain splashing up from below. Permanently installed full fenders are best in my opinion. They're always ready, even if they are not as trendy as ass savers. Lights, which can be decent lights or at least some cheap lights somewhere standby in your bag. Look, even if you ride mostly in broad daylight, you never know when you're going to get delayed or have to ride home in the dark. And one of the most dangerous things you can do as a rider is to be invisible to others on the road. Not to mention that there are also a legal requirement in some countries. Do you need really powerful lights? Well, maybe not. If you ride mostly in the city and the streets are well lit, you might get away with cheap lights to be seen. But if you ride in the dark and you want to see the road ahead of you, you want to invest in decent quality lights like this one. I use this one from Relight. It's a 700 lumen light, really powerful, and I can ride with it even in pitch dark. I also use a Cat-Eye Volt 800, which is no longer in production. I think it has been replaced by the AMPP 800. Those are fantastic lights too. If you get these powerful lights, they're mostly USB rechargeable, so you can always pop them on the charger when you get to the office or when you get home. You can also get some dynamo operated lights. They're probably not as powerful as these, but they're always ready. As soon as the wheels are turning, the lights come on. You also need to carry your stuff in some way. If you're a backpack person, then a backpack is all you need. You don't need anything else on your bicycle. But if you want to use panniers, you want to add a rack, either a permanently installed rack or a removable rack like I have on my bicycle. When you get to your destination, you might want to lock up your bike and for that you need a U-lock or a chain. I like this chain because I can wrap it around the frame of my bike. Even if I don't carry anything else with me, the chain is always on my bicycle. A repair kit with the essential tools to deal with mechanical issues is also on my needed list. This has gotten me out of trouble several times. I always carry a spare inner tube a mini pump, a multi-tool, tire levers, and a puncture repair kit to fix any mechanical issues I might encounter. Recently, I took a short trip with my Brompton without the repair kit, and I wish I had it with me because I got a puncture. By the way, if any of these items piques your interest, I'm going to put links to them in the description box below. Now onto the wants. These items are not strictly speaking necessary, but they provide a better experience because they make your ride safer, more comfortable, and more practical. Puncture-proof tires, like this Schwalbe Marathon here. Punctures always come in the worst moment, and many of them can be easily avoided if you install good puncture-proof tires. 
I actually prepared a video comparing six of the best commuter tires, which I'm going to link in the description below. Since my main commuter doesn't have a kickstand, I always appreciate when I ride a bike that has one. I love not having to think about what to lean the bike against when I stop. A handlebar mirror is also a great addition to bike commuting. It makes riding a little bit more convenient. You don't have to constantly turn around and it makes your ride safer in the city. Several people asked me in the comment section where I got this one from and it's a simple decathlon bar mirror. It's a very cheap one too. Well worth the price. Being thirsty is one of the worst feelings when you're on your bike and you're riding to work or anywhere else and you know that you still have a long way to go and you have no water with you. Which is why if you have a long commute you want to add a water bottle holder to your bicycle. No need to reach for the water in your backpack. Bar and grips serve comfort. If you have a bike with a flat handlebar and you tend to get numb hands Chances are that a set of bar and grips can reduce the numbness or eliminate it altogether. I love these grips from Ergon and I compared the entire GP lineup in a video. Again, I'm going to put a link in the description box below. I mentioned lights on the list of things you need, but high-vis items and reflective items are also a great way to stand out when you're riding at night. My philosophy is that the more reflectives you have on yourself and on your bike, the better because you can be much easier spotted, especially in the winter when the days are short. You don't want to risk having an accident because your lights ran out of battery. And this is a great backup solution. In this video, I show you 12 different reflective ideas that you can use on yourself or on your bicycle, including this one. See you there.